Alan Telter, I'll do because the place last one's from place. New York from Anakum already. Okay, fine. Fine. Wait, my phone. Okay, there you go. There you go. I don't want to phone. New York from Anakum. Okay. We'll look at the app. 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 We'll and uh, we would like to do that because we continue to buy from them. Okay. Okay, how many? What size? Three Kogos, whatever. Two potato and one uh, okay. whatever. And uh, starting to 36. Eric? Carter. Okay. Well <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 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 <laughs> the truth is, we said we're going to start the last Patek of Yuma. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Shmuel Greenwald asked that uh, the Rebbe had this thing about learning about the building of the base of Mikdash in three weeks. And um, <clears throat> even though uh, you have today many of the yeshivas, it's very popular to learn the avoid of the base of Mikdash. About the carbonus and sachas kochim, but there's not so much in today as <clears throat> the learning about the building of the base of mikdash, the construction of them. There's a lot about there's masachas midos, masachas tomid. There's a nice chunk in masachas yuma <clears throat> that talk about the building, the dimensions. How big is it? How big is the harabayas? How big is the Azorim? How big is the Azaz Koinim? The Azaz Yisrael? How big is the Ulam? The Hechel? How tall? How big the Mizpeach? Where was located? What was in the north? What was in the south? What was in the east? What was in the west? And that's all. <clears throat> and that's all um, very important. And uh, and there's a medrash that says that the Eivish said that. Um, if they're learning about how to construct the base of Mikdash, Davis says, I, 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 will, uh, I, will, uh, I will count it as if they're building it. So, <clears throat> I said it's a very big thing to learn. So, it's also a shtickle gemar and yuma. Well, I figured we'll, we'll learn about this today. Yeah, I forgot to bring with me pictures. There's books that have pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you have? Yeah. Okay, bring it over. Maybe it'll help us. I have a few good books. I read the portion just went out of my mind before I came. Are, you, are, no. are we going to be learning about the building of the third Beit Amikdash? Right. So the third base of Mikdash, we don't know <clears throat> exact, exact, exact. Uh, we know that the third base of Mikdash will be similar to the second base of Mikdash in many respects. And the second base of Mikdash was also not exactly as the first base of Mikdash. We have to learn what we know. Um, there are parts in Yecheskel which talks of, the Yecheskel talks about how the base of Mikdash will be built. And uh, Mashiach will come, Mashiach will tell us exactly, you know, everything, what it means. In the Gemara here, there's an argument about several things. Um, the base of Mikdash already built. Yeah, so, so uh, there's a shit to the third base of Mikdash already built. It's coming down from the sky. Yeah. Okay. So when we come down, we'll know exactly. <laughs> but there is an opinion that we have to build it. So either way, it's good to learn it. Yeah.
Okay. <clears throat> so the, uh, the Mishnah before this Gemara talks about um, before Yom Kippur that they uh, that they would um, <clears throat> they would uh, take the coin Godel to a place called Beis Achtinas. That was a place in the Beis Mikdash, a room, a house, building where he was learning for seven days how to handle the Ketoidus. Handling Toyota was a very difficult avoida. Required a lot of practicing. It was a, required a lot of practicing. The seven days, you have to, you know, it was acrobats. You have to flip the, you have to flip the thing, and all the Ketoidus goes flying out, and all it has to all land in your hands. Not even a drop lands on the floor. It required a lot of practice, 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 practice. And that was one of the main avoidas in the seven days that he would practice how to flip the the flip the the, the calf that holds the ketoidus and have all this thing go in the ear and then catch it all in his hands and nothing drops on the ground. Uh, now there was a there was a dispute between the Yidin, between the chachamim and the tzdukim. Chachamim said that when the pasuk said Kibbe on the nero al ketoidus, Abish said that you have to see me with the cloud. That means that you come into the Kodesh Kedoshim, you put down the coals, and then you put the uh, the Ketoidus on top. And then the house fills up with an unbelievable amount of smoke, like a cloud. The Tzdukim said, no, Ki that you have to come in, that it's already as a cloud. That means you have to put the Ketoidus on the, on, the, on the coals before you come into the Kodesh Kedoshim. And when you go up the, 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 the okay. yeah up in the air, it's a lot. It doesn't. Uh, it, I know that's what they it, say. It's. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, I guess they didn't throw it that high. It, it couldn't be that far. It's a nothing, right? No, it's not. It'll, 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 it'll dissipate. The, the stama, first of all, was probably not so powdery as we think. It was probably a little more dense than we think. Although it says, it was very fun. It goes around. They probably didn't. I, I will, listen, I don't know the answer. Okay, I'm not, I'm but the further sure that that's why the answer, the question is that that's why this was one of the most difficult avoiders in the base of English. Maybe it was a kunst also to throw it up. Maybe it was a kunst. Yeah, there was some type of kunst that was involved over here. That was something that required incredible amount of skill and practice. The catching is a, a tremendous skill. Yeah, the vice is also the throwing up, like you said. I mean, you take, take, uh, take, take, uh, take a spoon of flour, throw yeah. it up in the air, even not too, not too hot. Mm -hmm. Five inches in air, it's gonna just spread out. Right. That's a okay. pellet. So, okay. but it, there was some technique that they had and how it works, and they would practice. And the Erevim Kippur, they would take him to that place where they practice, and they'd make him make a shvua. That he's gonna, he makes a promise that he's gonna do it the right way, not the wrong way, because the tzedukim used to do it the wrong way, and they were scared, and that uh, he might uh, do it the wrong way. So they would take him and bring him to this place called Beis Aftinas, where he was studying the whole seven days of how he's gonna do the tortoise, and they would uh, say yes to promise, and he would. And the Gemara, the Mishnah says it was a very emotional thing. <speaking in Hebrew> That he would cry and they would cry, and they would cry that they're suspecting a coin godel who is a tzaddik. And he would cry that he's being suspected, but there's no choice because here and there a tzaduki fell in. So therefore, they had no choice but to do it, even though he was a tzaduki, but he wouldn't make a shvua, a false shvua. He, he can't say that right? he believed in the Sadis Adibis, can't use Hashem's name in vain, can't make a shvua. Mm. So uh, that way they would ensure that the coin Godel is doing the right thing. Okay. Now let's learn the Gemara. <clears throat> Some uh, interesting thing. The coin, they, they, it's not the shot that one coin was, every coin knew how to do everything. Every coin knew how to do, how do you know that? Because in the morning they would stand in a, in a circle and they would do a pious. And then you don't, you don't know which number, and then they get a number. They pick you, so you don't. You could get picked to shech the carbon. You could maybe you you could get picked for any job. If they picked you for shechting, first of all, was my mother behind 
Well, yeah, but, stay. but that day, if you were, it was your moment and you stood online and it was your number to Sheikh. Uh, I hope you know how to Sheikh if they point to you to say <laughs> Sheikh. <laughs> you got to know what you do. You got to have everything. Your nails got to be sharp. Your knife has got to be, no, the knife, they have knives in the base of Mikdash Chalof, but I mean, you better know, you better know what you're doing. Huh? Exactly. Ready, willing, and able. You got to be. The whole line was ready. Right. Just in case he added it. Right. So we should have a, a, a watch for it. Right. We should have a cup. Right. So these guys. Right. But Machshav is one thing. It could be, Machshav is could be easy. They really needed to know everything. There was no such thing a coin that doesn't know. The coin knew. Anyway, okay. let's go into Gemara. Tana, Lalam de Chafina. They, they, don't worry, I'll make pictures. I'll take a pen and paper and make pictures. Tana, Lalam de Chafina. They uh, would take him to Beis Aftinas to teach him this idea of Chafina, which is the idea of uh, flipping the, the ktoidus and catching it in your hand. I'm going to pop a Shtelish Kasar Lal Koen Godel. Koen Godel had two rooms. Achas Lishkas Tarhedrin. One was called Parhedir and the other one was called Beis Aftinas. One was in the north, one was in the south. Beis Amikdash was going from Mizrach to Maidim, from east to west. We have now the western wall, which is in the western tip of the Harabayis. Uh, the, the main gate was going in from the Mizrach, which is now like if, as if you were coming from Harazesim, you'd go up. Um, there were also gates going up um, from the side, from the Dorim. Today, you could see those gates. There's two gates that are stuffed up. You go, the archaeological diggers, you go in from that, uh, you know, where the buses come in That's to the Kais Lama Rabbi. When he would finish that reading. The Dorim gates, when he would finish that reading. Uh, well, now, this is exactly what we're going to talk about. Yeah. This is exactly what we're talking about. Anyway, so he had two offices. One office, Kilo, office. One room that belonged to him was in Safa, and one room that belonged to him was in Dorim. I walk. Oh. You hit it on the button. The Gemara soon talk about why did they why did they make him a sugar? Why couldn't they have a two office in the Tzofim or two rooms in the Dorim? They made him a sugar to walk from the Tzofim to the Dorim. If you have two rooms, right? If you're in an apartment building, wouldn't you like that the two rooms are you know <laughs> next to each other? Adjacent. Adjacent. Yeah. This guy had Nebuch, one in the Tzofim, one in the Dorim. The Gemara will explain why. They had one in the top and one in the dark. And one was called Lishkas Parhed and one was called Beis Aftinas. If not, we learned the mission. Vav Lishka is Hoyab Azora. In the Azora itself, probably Azora here means not as a Snoshim, but from where it's called as a Skoyanim, which is basically the space of where the Mizbeach was, where all the action was happening in the base of Mikdash. So in that place, there were six Lishka, six rooms. Gimel betzafim and Gimel bedarim. Three in the tzaf and three in the darim. Shabedarim. Those three that were in the darim. Lishkas hamelach, the salt room. Lishkas haparava, the leather room. Lishkas hamadichim, the washing room. Lishkas hamelach shashaman is a melach lekarbon. That's where they would store the salt for karbonos. The salt was very important to make mikdash. Every carbon must have salt. That was where they store the salt. Next, lishkas haparava. There was an incredible amount of leather that would be coming off the hides of the animals. That's where they would salt them, and eventually the koinim would split them, and the koinim would use the, those le as, as leather, take it home, and take the as a gift. Number three, oh, before we go, and on the gag, and on the roof of this one, there was just for Yom Kippur. Just for Yom Kippur, there was a mikveh there. Just for Yom Kippur. And it was on the roof. Uh, then there was the next one, Lishka Samadichim, the, the place of where they wash Samadichim, Krove Kochim, the intestines of the Kochim, which could be dirty. And before they go on the Mizbech, they have to be cleaned up. So they would bring him into this room and clean it up well. Umisham Mesiba Oila. Lagag Besa Parava. And from there, these are three rooms that were connected to each other. And in the third room, there was a Masiba. Masiba means what they uh, what they call in the Yiddish Ashwindel trap, which is a spiral staircase. It was a spiral staircase, a long, a big beam with spiraling stairs going up 
that the Kohen Gadol would climb up those stairs once a year on Yom Kippur to toivel in that mikvah. Uh, we're going to say well, only once a year you toivel because the rest of the, as we'll say in a few minutes, the rest of the year, the Kohen Gadol had a mikvah, the regular Kohen had a mikvah, but it wasn't in the base of mikvah. On Yom Kippur was an exception that the five times he toiveled in, 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 in Yom Kippur, minus the first one, as we'll say in a minute, that the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, uh, and the sixth time he went to the mikvah on Yom Kippur, that was in the base of Mikdash Mamish, in the Azara. So in the Dorim, there were three rooms that uh, all had a roof, but the, 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 everything else in the base of Mikdash was uh, no, no ceiling, besides in the Hechel and the Ulam. Everything was open to the sky. So these rooms were closed. They had a ceiling. And on top of the middle room, there was a, a mikvah. And, uh, and in, the, in the side room had these star spiral staircase that the Kohen Gadol could go up. Uh, uh, go up. Now you understand why would they say when the Kohen Gadol was toiveling, they would hold a curtain for his privacy because it was the mikvah was exposed. He was... You know, he was standing on top of a mountain. So that's why the coin, and when he would toivel, would walk up with him and they would hold uh, they would hold a curtain in order to allow him to have sneers. We have, we have more copies. Thank you. We were going to start tonight. The last page can you The Yoyce, you asked that we should learn uh, the Binyan Beis Amikdush decided that the Mitzvah this week and next week will learn Glinader, will learn Mamish about the construction of the Beis Amikdush. If the doesn't mind, I'll go back quickly from the beginning because uh, I covered. Uh, yeah. Do um, um, uh, allow to use a uh, laser from um, animals shack on Shabbos? Or let's say, if animals shack on Shabbos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Tona. Again, fast, fast in the Gemara. Tona, that Lolom uh, de Chafin. They would, uh, when they would take the Kohen Gadol, Adivim Kippur, to make the promise that he's going to do the right thing, uh, they they would take him to the base of Tinas. Over there is where he learned the Malach of the Chafina, which is to flip the 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 calf and to catch the Ketodis. I'm going to pop a shnei lishkot to the Gadol. Every Kohen Gadol had two rooms. Achas lishkas parhedim, achas lishkas base of Tinas. One was called parhedim, one was called Aftinas. We'll talk soon about why the names of these offices. Achas betzafan, v'achas betzafan. One was in the tzafan, and one was in the donim. Here, here's the Say the Mizrach is the Maid, Safan Dorim. One was in the one side of the base of Mikdash, and one on the other one in the base of Mikdash. Okay. Achaz bit Safan, the one that's Safan at Nan, we learned in the Mishnah. In in the in, in Mesechus, uh, in Mesechus uh, Midos. The Nan, we learned the Mishnah. Vav Lishkois Heb Azar, there were six Lishkois in the Azar itself. Again, the base of Mikdash had many, many, many more rooms. Uh, maybe tomorrow or next week I'll bring pictures. But in the Azorah, which is the space that's beyond Ezra's Nosha, it's and beyond Ezra Sisrol, called Azora, that only had six Lishkos, three in the right, three in the left, three in Safan, three in Dorim. Gimel but Safan, the Gimel but Dorim, Sheba Dorim, the ones that are in Dorim, Lishkas Hamelach, Lishkas Haparava, Lishkas Hamadich, Lishkas Hamelach, Shashem Hamelchim. That's where they store the salt. Every carbon needs salt. On the roof of it was a mikveh for the kind God will be a mikipurim. And uh, that's where they would uh, wash the intestines of the kachim. And there there was a spiral staircase going up to the roof of the base of Parav. So these are the three rooms that are in the Dorim. One, two, three. One roof on top of them. And then you had uh, spiral staircase going up. And the middle one had a mikvah straight in the center in the middle. The and that was in the Dorim. Was connected with one set. Huh? The three rooms connected like with one set? One set. No, the, 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 the three rooms were on ground level. The three rooms. LMI, on top of the roof of the middle room, there was the built a mikvah. The, the three rooms uh, were, were like this. The three rooms were not one on top of the other. The three rooms were like this. Like this, one next to each other. Alamai, in the middle one, they built a mikveh on the roof. And on this one, they had a spiral staircase coming up. The three rooms were open. Uh, on, the, uh, on the roof, there was one hole. There was one hole getting up from here. 
that through the spiral staircase you get on you get to the middle which is the mikvah but the, yeah the, the roof of all three of them were flat it was open yeah the roof was open yeah right it this is where we're talking about as i said before we'll talk in a minute where he traveled all year besides him kipper and even him kipper morning before he started that void, there was a different every, place. Every morning used to do a mikveh. Was this one there was a night? special mikveh for the coin godel on the one side of the base of Mikdash, and there was another mikveh for all the coinim. There was a big place called Beis Hamoikid. Mikveh it was a huge room. It had four lishkas. It looked similar to what the Ezra's Noshim it had. It was a room like this, and then they had four lishkas in the four corners. And in the Beis Hamoikid, it's called Beis Hamoikid because they had, they had a big fire there because the coin were, their feet was freezing, freezing. So they had come specially by night, I think in, in Yushalayim, by day it could be sunny, but by night it's posh freezing and they're standing with bare feet on the rock. So they would come to warm up their feet and their bodies in the Beis Hamoikid. They would sleep. Beis Hamoikid was, as well, maybe next week we'll learn about the Beis Hamoikid, Mesa Moikid was half in the Kodesh and half outside in the Choyl. They would sleep in the part that's Choyl. One of these rooms had steps going down, and that's where the mikvah system was, where they had mikvahs for the coin. Okay, let's continue. Not long ago in the Rambam, the, the, the coin cannot be in the basin like Meav Hashanah. Oh, sorry, the coin might, Godel, he he's going to... He might he does, to make it that the winter should be earlier, so he doesn't have to be in the... And the and they're called so mikvah, the mikvah because they're called freezing mikvah. Yeah. Okay. Vaita. Zog the Gemara. Vaita and the Mish. So the Gemara brings Gimel Shabbat Sofen. It's the last three lines of the small lines of the Gemara. Gimel Shabbat Sofen. The three that are on the Sofen side of the base of Mikdash. Lishka Sa'etz. Lishka Sa'gorla. Lishka Sa'gazis. What is it? Lishka Sa'etz. Amar Rebbe Lazar Ben Yaakov. Shechak Bimaya Hoya Mishamashis. Rebbe Lazar Ben Yaakov said, I forgot. What was the Lishka Sa'etz about? Maybe next week we'll learn about this. Rabbi Lezer um was, uh, was a, a, a very important Tana. Uh, the Gemara says, Mishnah say kav noki. Everything he said was like clean like anything. And uh, the Gemara says, you want the copy of the Gemara? The Gemara says that he's the one that wrote Meseches Midois. So he was the expert on the base of Mish. And yet he said, I forgot what was the Lishka Sa'etz. Abishol, Oimer, what are you talking about? Lishka is Koen Godel This room was really the Lishka of the Koen Godel. That's where the Koen Godel lived in the seven days before Yom Kippur. That was his room dedicated for him. Behind these two rooms um, was, uh, was this Lishka of the eights of the Koen Godel. The Gag Shlost and Shavet. And the Gag was, was Shavet. So in other words, in the Dharam of the Beis Hamikdash, there was three rooms like this. In the Tzofen of the Beis Hamikdash, it was not like that. In the Tzofen, it was like this. There was two rooms. One was the Lishka Sagozis, which was huge. If you think about the whole Sanhedrin sat there. And the Lishka Samain, which was, as we'll soon say, where they had dug very deep to aquifer to get water for the entire usage of the Beis Hamikdash. Behind, there was a little room that was called... That's also a miracle, because if you think about it, the base of English is on top of the mountain, and you dig in a hole to bring water from the bottom to the top. They dug, they dug and they... No, they, they, the Gemara says there will be a dli. No, no, no. There's, over here, that we don't find that there should be a nest. Let's read. V'gak shlosh nishav, lishka sagoyla, sham hoya, boyer hagoyla, that there was there was a uh, there was at this there was a they dug unbelievable deep well and they would have a, they they had a, installed a special pipe uh, I'm sorry not a pipe a rope with a wheel that was always going up and down up and down bringing up water for all the usage that they needed on the Harabayas. Lishka Sagozis, Shasham Hoyas, and Hedden shall you stroll your shevets with Donna Sakonim? Sahedden would sit there and they would look at the Yichas of the coin and mission him so it's so. It's 71 people sitting there, that's a huge room. It's a huge room, right. And it's called Lishka Sagozis. They built it from beautiful rock called Gozis. 
So, so the, these are the the rooms that were in uh so in the Tzofen and the Dedara. These are the rooms that are in the Tzofen and the Dedara. So this is a Mishnah that tells you about the base of Mikdosh and the Azara. There were three rooms on the Dedara and three rooms on the Tzofen. It tells you what they were using these rooms for. Okay, let's continue. We said that the the, the Kohen Gadol had two rooms, one in the Tzofen and one in the Dedara. We just figured out that there's something called Lishka Sa'etz, which was the room of the Kohen Gadol. Now let's figure out the other one. Ba'achel Bedorim, Bitnan, we learned in a Mishnah, uh, if anyone was looking to gain back to the place, so it's six lines from the top and the big lines. The Tanan, Shiva Shorim, Hoyu Bazar, there were seven gates going into Azar. Gimel Batsafun, Gimel Bedorim, Ba'achel Bemizrach, one, three in the Tzav, three in the Dara, one in the Mezer. In the Beis HaMikdash, things were quite symmetrical, but not mamish. Everything wasn't mamish, perfect, symmetric. You know, some things are too much symmetrical, it's ugly, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't halish, and it's like too much, you know, Russia, the same yeah, thing. thing like... Yeah. In the Beis HaMikdash, in general, things like, as you'll see soon, in general, go in, there's three gates on the right, three gates on the left, and one in the center. But as you soon see, not every gate looked exactly as the other gate. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like the Louvre. It didn't look like uh, Versailles. It didn't look like those European palaces, which everything is like exactly. so symmetrically, you could brech already. You know, you can't see the difference between the right side and the left side. You know, have to look at your hands to know what's the right, what's in the left. In the base of Mikdash, things were sort of symmetrical, but for it, as you see soon. Shiva Shorim Hoyu, there were seven gates. Bazar, Gimel B'tzafim, Gimel B'dorim, three in the Tzafim, three in the Dorim. Echeb HaMizrach, one in the front, and the Mizrach. Sheba Dorim, Sharad Leika, the Shara that was, that was called Sharad Leika. Sheini Loi, this was the closest to the Koisla Maravi. Sharad Leika is the fire word. Yeah. As, and Sheini Loi, Shara Korbim, with the Kermonis was brought through. Shlish Loi, Shara Mayim. Sheba Mizrach, if you look in the Mizrach, Shar Nikna, there was a big gates going into Azara called Shar Nikna. Mishnei Lichko is Hoyu, and there were two all little officers. Achas Bimin of Achas Mesmoyla, Achas Lishka's Pinchas Amarbish. It was called the Lishka Pinchas, who used to put on the clothing for the Koinim. Obviously, not necessarily every person that worked there was named was Pinchas, but uh, probably. The name, the Lishka, because the first guy that started, you know, his name was Pinchas. That they made the chavitim for the coin godel that they brought every day. What are the three gates in the tzafen? Shana which is, which uh, which is near there. They keep extra fire as a backup for the base of mikdash and the mizbeach. Uh, now you see how the gates don't all look exactly the same. In front of it, it was like a building. Um, that uh, that he didn't just walk into the gate. It was like a foyer going in. Achzad is like a foyer. and there was a roof to that foyer. And that's where the coin would stand at night uh, by day. They stand on the second. And the levim downstairs to guard the base. It was one of the places. And in front of them was the chel. Sheni loy the next gate. Shara Korbin, Shlishiloy, Shar Beis Samoyked. The Beis Samoyked was this huge, huge room, as we said before. No, 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 that's the Shagodis. Beis Samoyked had four, four, that the bonfire inside. The Koinim, the feet were freezing. They would come in here to warm up, and also by night they would sleep. They would sleep in the half that's outside. So, so here they had. Um, so here they had this. Say this is soften. So these are the these one gate here, one gate here, and one gate here. You see? I'm sorry. I was gonna bring a safer with pictures. I'm sorry. I forgot. So these in soften. You have one gate, and there's a foyer. You have another gate, and then there's a gate that you have to walk through the base hamoikit. Okay. Continue. Tanya, we learned um, we are right now. 
Yutes Aleph, the last word of the line is Chomish. It's about 12 lines from the top in the big lines. 12 lines exactly. Tanya, we learn, Chomish Tvilus, we asaru Kedushim, Tevok and Godel Makadosh Bayem. On Yom Kippur, it was five times he went to the mikveh and the toivel, and ten times he was Makadosh Yadav at Aglu. Kulam B'Koydosh, Al Gag Beis HaParavah, and they were all in the Koydosh on the on the roof of the Beis HaParavah. Chutz Mizdu Shei B'Choyl, besides the more first one that was B'Choyl, Al Gabi Shad HaMayim, and that was on the Shad HaMayim, Hu B'Tzad Lishka Sayoya, and that was on the side of his Lishka. We know that we said already that the Sharam, there were three Sharam in on the Dorim and three Sharam on the Tzof. The Sharamayim is one of the three on the Dorim. And we say right next to the Sharamayim, he had his office. Okay. But we know he had two offices, one on the Tzof and one on the Dorim. Again, the base of Mikdush is, think about it. You know how the Temple Mountain looks today. There is a Koisel Hamarovi, which is a portion that's, lived, that's left on the western side. Might have, you would walk in on the Mizrech, you'd walk in, and then we said there was the big gates, the Shar Nikner, and you had three gates on the Tzofen, and three gates on the Dorim, and then one of the gates on the Dorim was called Shar Amayim, and by the Shar Amayim, there was a mikveh, again, they had a, they had a foyer built with a roof, the top of the roof, there was a mikveh, and that was dedicated for the Kohen Gadol, when he, not for Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, we said, was inside, Remember, in those three offices, when the middle one, the Lishka Saparava, was on the roof. But the Sharamayim was for the regular toiling and even Yom Kippur morning before he started. And right next to the Sharamayim on the Dorim, there was an office that was dedicated for the Kohen Gadol. So now the Gemara is trying to figure out which, because he had two, one in the Tzaf and one in the Dorim, which was the, which was the Parava, which, I'm sorry, which was the Parhedin and which was the, 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 the Aftinas. Which one was where he slept and he ate? And which one was where he learned and practiced? So he said in the Dorim, there was a Shana Mayim, Mitzat, Lishkose, Oisa, Velo Yadaina, Elishkes Parhedrim, Betsofen, Elishkes Beis Aptinas, Bedorim, or Elishkes Beis Aptinas, Betsofen, Elishkes Parhedrim, Bedorim. I'm not sure which one was which. I know that he had one room on the right and one on the left, one on the Tzofen, one on the Dorim, but I don't know which one was what. So the Gemara says a mustabra would be as far to say the lishkas parhedrim bedorim, that the parhedrim, the one where he slept and he ate, was in the dorim. My time, because it makes sense. It's right next to the mikveh. Wouldn't you like to go wake up in the morning and roll into the mikveh? I remembered when I was in sixth grade, or seventh grade, whatever. We had a rebbe. You remember silly things, and he used to yeah, whatever. I remember he said he had an invention. He's when he's going to be a rich man, he's going to have a sliding pond going from his bed to his basement. In his basement, he's going to have a mix, and he's going to have alarm in the morning. And you press the button, and you, you go flying into the, into the sliding pond, <laughs> <laughs> and you go straight into the mix. He had a corner to do the boys in a house, so he would go and get a corner. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna go from the sliding pond from his bed. They had a fire, they had never where's that a fire? It's around there. Yeah, it's a very, very strong component. So uh, people say if you do it for other people to use, then it's not going to work. They do that in months, they have fries and shops. Uh -huh. Yeah, but other people use it. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. So the Gemara says, makes sense that his bedroom was right next to the mikveh. No, the mistamer, the lishkas, but had him bedon in my time. A makdim koi, he wakes up. Mesa chenagla goes to the bathroom. He goes flying from his bed to the bathroom. From the bathroom, he goes to the mikveh. Oh, to the the gomer chafin, and then he'll go to the tzofen and uh, and learn the 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 uh, skill of kafina which is how to flip the calf and catch the tortoise was the basic make the job of the boy do pull the yarn the boss upon you when it's a night uh, so then uh, that's it model of other as the dawn and the tovel the night and he goes to sleep but the kids said that the the mikveh is uh, the regular the weekday mikveh not the yom kippur mikveh should be 
next to his house, where his room, where he sleeps in the base of Mikdash. Why need to go to the Mikdash? <laughs> that that was the derech. It was toivel in the morning and toivel at night. I don't know why. The Omar Lishkes Parehedin. It's often. So it doesn't make sense. Magda Vakoy Mesa Chiragla Vazal Adon and Batova Vagava Echapina Vazal Abbas and Migdra Ravada Vaid Kula Yamal of Asapanya Modale Vada Vazal Adon Vatova the boy Lamed and Lamezal at Safan Lamed and Menach Mitorach Matrachin and Kulai. Why would you bother him? The kids are. Why wouldn't you make that in the room that he sleeps in is right next to the mikveh? Wouldn't you like to live next to a mikveh? Wouldn't you like to live next to a mikvah? You want to walk halfway across Flatbush to get to a mikvah. You like to live, every Jew likes to live close to a mikvah. So probably if the mikvah was by the Shad Hamayim, which is one of the three gates that were in the Dorim, and we know he had one office in the Dorim and one office in the Tzachim. One was for living and one was for learning. So probably the living one to where he lived was next to the mikvah. Wouldn't you make sense? Sigmar says, no, no, no. It's Duki who lifresh. We want it should be hard for him. Because if it's a Tzduki, he's going to say, oh, this thing, I don't, it's, it's crazy. You got to walk here. You got to, they're trying a little bit to make it harder for him. Maybe if he's a Tzduki, he'll decide to quit. Hinami, Shaloy Tazuach Dai love. He shouldn't become a big ball guy. But, um, you know, that, uh, that uh, someone told me that there was in a certain kihila and a little boy was telling him he would, he would love to be a Rebbe. So he asked the little boy, why would you love to be a Rebbe? So he says, uh, because if you're a Rebbe, you have a very nice suburban. He wants to have a suburban. A suburban. A suburban. Uh -huh. Yeah. So... Uh, so uh, here they didn't want the coin out to feel like a rebbe with a suburb. So they put like this, it's all cozy. He has room. And from there, he slides the sliding pan into the mikveh. It's too cozy. He's uh, like a rebbe with a suburban. So they didn't want him to feel like a rebbe with a suburban. If you wouldn't say that, why did they make Machatchila that should have two rooms for the Koyan God? One where he sleeps, and that's his office. And one where he learns the avoid, and that's also his office. Why don't you? And it's the other end. Make it together or make it all one cozy place together. We don't want him to feel like the Koyan God with the suburb. There's a chatchila we don't want him to be a the Kohen Gadol with the suburban. So it's Nishkenaya. And the Ramam Taka Paskins that, uh, that, uh, that uh, really he slept on the Tzof, and the Tzofen, which is actually the more Kedusha in the, is in the Tzofen. And the Tzofen where, were the more important stuff, where over there was the three rooms, the Lishka Samayim, and the Lishka Sanhedrin, and the Lishka Sa'its was behind them. So his office was right now, where he slept, was right behind with the Sanhedrin was sitting in the Lishka Sagos. Wait, well, the other kind of sleep. This the other kind of slept here. They slept here in the in the base of Nitzot. So they're far away from there. Not so far. I mean, he was, they were also in the Tzav. They were also in the Tzav. Very close, actually. Actually, very close. The, the way I'm making the picture is actually pretty true to life. This yeah. is the Tzav. This gate one, two, three. Here's the, where the Koinam hung out. And and uh, this is really should be in here. And and uh, and and this was the three. This the this is Lishka Sagozes, Lishka Samayim, and Lishka um, Haetz, where the Kohen Gadol slept by night. This was his little apartment. Why did Taka do this and make the Kohen Gadol in that apartment? Because that's what's had chashiv as far. I mean, Taka he can't feel like a Kohen Gadol with suburban, but he really does need to have a suburban. Oh. You know, he's for the Kohen Gadol. Malchus. For Malchus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Taka, we don't want to shadu 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 zuach daiter love, but for the Kohen Gadol. That he shouldn't start feeling like a big rebbe with a suburban. <laughs> um, okay, at the time is short. I want to share an unbelievable word from the rebbe, not stam, like wow. unbelievable. The um, the Rambam writes that uh, that you're not allowed to build in the base of Mikdash. You're not allowed to build any wood in the base of Mikdash. It's totally forbidden to build a any wood in the base of Mikdash. The Rambam writes it's a very sympathetic aleph. The Rambam zak ain't boiling by eight boilet a cloud. 
It's in Pedic Aleph Lochetes, Ein Boinim Boy, the Hechel Vazor of Eid Boil Klal, Allah Oiba Vonim of Ravenim Besid. The Ravid asks, Valoi Lishkas can go to Shalait Saya. It's called Lishkas Aids. So there's a whole bunch of answers. It was only called Lishkas Aids. It really wasn't. It's a little funny to say that sometimes they, if they needed to store a place, didn't have where to store, they'd put the extra Aids in his apartment. Funny answer to begin with. And uh, that's why he was called Lishkas Aids. I mean, there was a place called in the base of Mikdash Lishka Sa'etzim. Right. Lishka Sa'etzim. One of the four uh, big in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the corner, in the, in the Ezes Noshim, right when you came in, that was Lishka Sa'etzim. It was a huge thing. Koinim would sit there and they would clean the woods for the bed. That was called, but it's not called Lishka Sa'etz. Lishka Sa'etzim, because they were put, this was called Lishka Sa'etz. It sounds like it was built out of wood. It was built out of mahogany. It was built out of mahogany. So the so the the Kesef Mishnah asks us in Bashay says it's not Kavua, and he says maybe the Lishka of the Kohen Gadol where he slept was not Kavua, it was a booth. Doichik Teres, very Doichik Teres. The Rebbe has a Moira Dikat Teres. The Rebbe says that Amam says Vayim Boiling Boy Eats a Boilet. You're not allowed to have a piece of wood in the base of Mikdash, but sticking out, but built in. Yeah. But built in. If you smear a little cement on it, not a problem. You can have wood. And he brings that eye, the Rebbe brings that eye from the Gemara Rosh Hashanah, the Avdala, that says, the Shleim HaMelech built Chatzar Apnimis, Shloisha Ture Gozes, Vitur Kresas Arrozim. That uh, he had it like fancy, you know, like rock, 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 wood, rock, 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 wood. It was like whatever, a certain design in the walls of the Azorah. So how could you have wood? You're not allowed to have wood. So the answer is that he smeared cement on top of the wood there was never wood visible but uh the question is so but why is it called lishka sa'ed still so first of all why did they really build it with wood and why was it called lishka sa'ed so the toys was yomtev said that just like we made him walk from here we didn't have a nice cozy apartment for him where he lives where he learns where he goes mikveh. to the mikveh sliding palm from bed to mikveh Saberbin, we didn't like it. We don't want him to have that Rebbe Shafil of the Saberbin and the Mikveh right next to his uh, apartment. So here also, we wanted to like give him another little job and call it Lishkasa Eitz. It's not like so harsh, it was just made out of wood. It's a little bit of a doich and teretz. That's why it was called Lishkasa Eitz. That's a Toysus Yom. The Rebbe says a shot like this. His father, the Rebbe's father, has a little ha'or in, in Torah Slavi Yitzchak about this. The kid said, he says like this. He says that the, the apartment where the Kohen Gadol lived was originally called Lishka Sa'etz, and then it was called Lishka Parhedre. Originally it was called Lishka Sa'etz because the, the, the Kohen um, Gadol, like Shimon at Tzadik, they were unbelievably big tzaddikim, and they had unbelievable arichas yamim. Like this one coin god was 80 years, Shimon Atzadik was 40 years, and then there was uh, there the, the was with the, the very long, they lived very long. And the, the Pasik says in Yeshaya, Kimea eats, you may am. When you want to say something is living for a long time, you say he's like an eight, like a wood. There are certain trees that can live a thousand years. Right. They have trees that can live. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly that famous tree. So there's trees. So when you want to say the Pasik says. Yeshaya, capital Samachay, Kimea eats, you may am. You want to say, David my nation is eternal. Kimea eats, you may am. So the Oyde Chemim Biamina, Koyen, Koyenim are a dinian of Chesed, especially Koyen Gadol is super Chesed. So uh, the, 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 that's what's called Lishka Seitz. Why is it called Lishka Seitz? Because this week's Pasha says that if a person kills someone else, Accidentally, he has to go to the Ari Mikva. How long does he have to be there? Kill the going Gadol dies. What's at the Shaykhs when the Kohen Gadol dies? Chazal say, Ritzeyach Mekatsa Yom of Shalom. Kohen Gadol Marich Yom of Shalom. Ain Bedin Shem Isha Mekatsa Yom of Shalom. Love Nam Isha Marich Yom of Shalom. So we see from here that the Kohen Gadol represents Arichas Yom. The Kohuna represents Oidech Yom in Bimina. Represents the idea of Arichas Yamim. It represents the idea of Arichas Yamim. So, therefore, therefore, it's not Stam, Azach, that he was a Tzaddik and they lived alone. The whole Indian of a Koyan Godel is Meramit. That's why we're saying that the Koyan Godel 
uh, is machaper on this guy that, that was makat, so that killed someone. So the coin god is menamaz and arichet yom. And that's why the room of the coin god was called lishka so eights. Kimea eights, yimei ami. But later there were people that were not such sadikim. And the last 100 years, the, the base of Mikdash, there were rich Jews. As you go today, if you go to Rova, so they show you, you can pay a couple of shek and you go here, there, the museums, and they show you that the, the, what was called the, the upper city, the Ir al Yoyna, where the rich, rich, rich people live, the, the best that I mentioned, what they call today, the rich people, among most of the people living there were from the families of Koyan. And they had wealthy homes and fancy uh, places. And uh, some of them were super wealthy. And they, they wanted to have the schus to be a coin godel. So they would bribe, they would bribe the Roman, whoever was Roman. stationed government. And, and they would uh, be, but they were not Sadiqim. And they're playing with fire, literally. They brought the Ketoidus into the Ketoidus Kadoshim. And many of them didn't uh, live too much. Afterwards, they died, maybe a few months later. If they were really bad, they died on the spot. But otherwise, they, they lived for a few more months, and then they died. So every 12 months ended up being a new coin godel. So uh, parhedrin means that it's being switched every, parhedrin alolu, that they switch them every 12 months. So that's why originally it was called lishka sa'etz, because eitz is tzadikim, marich yom ha'shalodim, especially coin godel, and then it's called lishka parhedrin. Okay. This is time of the second base of Mikdash. Now we know that there's a word from the Rebbe and that, that, uh, that the Rebbe had till, till the Rebbe came along, everyone always thought. So these guys, ah, scoundrels, bad people, not going to say other words, they, 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 they spent money for everything with money, money. Every, the money and they became Kohen Gadol with money. You could become the Rebbe for money. And uh, and that was really that that was the spirit of what people learned. That the Rebbe came along and turned it on its head. The Rebbe came along and said, "You see, he didn't have Mercedes Nefesh. The guy knows he's going to die in twelve months. The guy he knows he's going to spend so much money for what? To die? Who wants to spend half his half his net wealth in order to die in twelve months? But these people had such a desire to be in the Kodesh Hakadosh and to be close to God that they were willing to do so." That's one shot that ever said, that ever said wow. it several times. Unbelievable. You see how that ever looks at things? Unbelievable. Yeah. And that ever said another shot. But, but, but look at their intent. That ever says that there's unbelievable limut schus. Then that ever said another shot. That was the one. Then that ever said another shot. That ever said that what does it mean? Every 12 months is a new. How do you, how does it? Sometimes a person could become a new person every 12 months. How does a person become a new person? The Ramam says about Shubha says, I'm a new person. But Shubha announces, I'm a, per I'm a new person. I'm not the same person you know from yesterday. Like I guess you That's what the Ramam says. Any also Like again, I'm a new man. I'm a new man. That's it. Declare bankruptcy. I'm a new man. Again, the new name, new identity, uh, witness protection. Again, the, I'm a new man. I'm not the old man talking to the wrong guy. I'm a new man. That's what the Begodim and the Kohen Godel, you're not allowed to use it ever. Um, the din is big day love and sha'avad, Kohen Godel, Baham, Biyam, Atsum, Enu, Evidem, Pam, Shnei, Loyalam, Alon, Nagnozim, Amokam, Shibi, Shadaisa, Shanam, Avinich, Misham. Why? Because he's a new man. Next year, he's a new man. He's a totally new man. So that's the idea of, 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 uh, of a Baltruva. Baltruva is a new man. In order to become a new man, you need um, to become a Baltruva. You need a lot of strength of character to, to, to go with the flow. Even a Tzad who goes with the flow, it doesn't require so much strength. But to, to go against the current, you know, a person is doing always a virus. As friends are always showing. And now he wants to, or not a big Russia, but whatever we have, or every one of us has our comfort zone. Every one of us at this table has our comfort zone. Now what we work on ourselves we try to change that requires an incredible amount of Buddha. The Rebbe's father says the Lishkas Parhedrim is made of three words. Par, Har, Din. Par, Har, Din. Par is the idea of Buddha. Har is the idea of Buddha. And Din is the idea of Buddha. So a Baltruva needs a lot of strength to be a Baltruva. So on Yom Kippur, the coin God was going for Klal Yisrael. What are we trying to do on Yom Kippur? We're trying to be about Shuvah. So, like the Kutarak, we're trying to be Shuvah. 
That's why, that's why it was called Lishka's Pad that every 12 months a Jew becomes a new man. I'm not the same guy. You know me from last year. You know the wrong guy. You're talking to the wrong guy. Who? Who are you talking about? Cool. I have a new name. Question. I have a new identity. The, does the word Teshuva mean to return? Teshuva means to return. Return to my neshama. The neshama. Okay. But but yeah. the, the guy that that scoundrel you knew from last year, he's not around anymore. <laughs> because he, he's dead. He's finished. <laughs> exactly. It's a new man. A new, a new man. Shuba, yeah, new man. If you yeah, have any yeah. bills to forward, talk to him, not to me. Yeah. I'm I'm a new man. Yeah. So that's the Indian of the Koyan Godel on Yom Kippur. So the earlier years, the Koyan would talk a big tzaddikim, and the tzaddik is the idea of eight tzaddikim yomim. But even that, it was smeared with cement in front of it because the main emphasis of the Koyan Godel of Yom Kippur is not his avoid, but the avoid he's doing for Klal Yisrael. And the avoid he's doing for Klal Yisrael is not so much the idea of avoid the tzaddik, of avoid the Zavali Truva. In the later years, when the when the when the Kohen Gadol himself was not such a tzaddik, but he was in the level of Baal Tshuva, uh, maybe a Baal Tshuva to be, not yet a Baal Tshuva, but uh, but still he had a Jewish heart and he was willing to give away so much money and to die in order to be close to Hashem. So he was for sure in the level of Baal Tshuva. Therefore, they called Lishkas Pad Hedrin. That's why they call it, and that's why you see in our Gemara that it's called Lishka Seitz, and it's also called Lishka's Pad Hedrin. The Rebbe says, and a beautiful Rebbe to this, that where is it called Lishka Seitz? In Meseches Midois. Midois is the idea of Tzadikim. The idea of, uh, because uh, Tzadik is the Midah of Agbala, and who, and who learned the Meseches Midois? Rebbe Lazar Ben Yaakov, Mishnah Sekavanoki, was a big Tzadik. Where is it called Lishka's Pad Hedrin? In Meseches Yuma. Yuma is the whole idea. What's the idea of Yuma? Oh, Yom Kippur. Tshuva. So when we're talking about Seches Midois, which is that, which is Menam is that way, it's a tzaddikim, it's called Lishka, so eight. And when we're talking about Seches Yuma, then it's called, which, which is the idea of Yom Kippur, Bali Tshuva, Tshuva, then it's called Lishka's Padhead. So it's Thank unbelievable, you. beautiful word. So it ends up that what we learned tonight is connected with this week's parasha. That's why it's called Lishka Sa'it, because the coin God is Madame Zinya Barichas Yaman, Kame Eight Sikmayami. But there's also another M as in, that uh, that uh, uh, it's called Lishka's Parheddin, which is Madame's Navoid the Balchuva, and that's Ikid, the Ikid Inyan. That's the difference Sakas Tavim Sakas Yuman. That's the difference in the earlier years, the basic mix, later years, the basic mix. David Shall Help him. Uh, oh, you'll do it. Why don't you do it? I'm a little behind. I'm still uh, holding uh, I'm, I'm holding the giver. I'm still, I know, no, but I'm, I'm still in the gila. Um, Dave shall help him that every one of us that we should talk, a, we should talk, a have the you know, that uh, that we should be able to turn around and say we're a new person. The person is a poor man, he doesn't have a lot of candles to, to light. And Shabbos, uh, also Shabbos Hanukkah. So you need nail Shabbos to light the end of Shabbos, and I also need for Hanukkah, but he doesn't have enough. So which one he should do? Or for no nail beta when at Hanukkah, or nail beta with Yiddish Hayom, or money to buy a candle for the house and Yiddish. Nail beta to have a light in the house is more important. Mishum Shlom beta. In other words, in, in order to have Shlom Bait, the Torah says that you should have light. Shara Hashem Mimchak Masot Shalom Ben Ishle Ishto. When, when, uh, when there's a, a story with the Seito, the, the Avishtar says, erase my name, just to make a peace between a husband and a wife. Gadol Shalom, she called the Torah, Nishnah Lassot Shalom Ba'olam. Shalom is a big deal. The, the all reason that they brought to this world is to make a peace. Shenema, Tarachai Atarech Enoa, B'konei Tereshera Shalom. Tereshera Shalom, Mekor Chaim, L'Sur Mimokshe Mavik. Sefer Revi, Sefer Noach. Tepur Salochem. כל מתן תורה יהיה אדם פוגע אישה בזוג, אם רצה הוא והיא לשאול אותה, הוא נכנסה לתוך ביתו והוא עליו בינו לבין עצמו. בפור מתן תרא, a person saw a girl in the street, you bring me to your house, and she became your wife. ותהיה לו לאישה. כיוון שנית נתרא, once the average to give the תרא, תסתבו ישראל, שאם ירצה איש לישראל איתה, יקנה אותה תחילה בפני אלה. once we got the תרא, if you want to marry somebody, bring two witness to see that she is your wife, then you can bring her to your house. ואחר כך תהיה לו לאישה שנאמר, have a good night. Okay. Now we know how to build the base of Mikdash. Yeah. That uh, Mashiach will come in and we already know how to put the seven gates. We know how to put 
how to put the three rooms in the right, the three rooms in the left. So the shares will come. Monday? Okay, you're done. Monday. Sunday. Uh,